So what I'd like to do is I'd like to keep continuing, you know, keep the, the momentum going here. And I want to talk about um, another search tool as well as I want to go into Patnax a little bit more. Okay? So we're going to talk about some search tools and some strategies. So we're going to, like I said, revisit Patmax Align, and we're also going to learn about this other tool called SearchMax. Okay? Uh, we're going to talk about a few of the extra parameters that go along with Patmax, um, and then we're also going to create and configure a SearchMax tool, so we can kind of see you know, what's going on between them and why you would use one over the other. So let's go back to Patmax for a moment. Let's revisit it. So one of the things that you can do with PatMax during the training process is you can tell it to ignore polarity. Okay? What that means is when you train something, it might be a dark item on a light background or vice versa, but you're letting the system know, I'm allowing either. It can be light on dark or dark on light. So if you go through and you say ignore polarity now, you know, even though we have varying background, this would all be the same polarity, but if I change polarity and I said, yeah, let me look for it, I would still be able to find that. Okay, so whether it's light or dark, dark or light, you're just looking for the same geometry, and that's how it's going to find it. But be careful. It can give you some erroneous results because now you are increasing its uh, tolerance, and so by increasing the tolerance, you can increase that you could have some stuff slip in. So in this case, I have an object that kind of looks like a comb. You know, so what gets trained is just the sh that shape. So if I have it with, you know, that I'm using polarity, then it's always looking for something darker on a light background that looks like the object I trained. But if I say ignore polarity, I can still pick up the expected match, but depending on what the background looks like and like potential noise, it could also think that this other amount is also the same item as well. So that's what I'm saying, that it can throw things off. Now, of course, if you are looking for only one object, and you have something that has a higher score than the other, then of course that's going to pick that up first. But just in case it doesn't, or you have like a lot of confusion in the, the system, it might pick something up. Just a warning to you. You look perplexed, Rickham. Does that make sense? No. What are you thinking? Go ahead, because someone else probably thinks the same way. It's okay. Normally you would think that wouldn't be the big thing, but it's looking for just like the edges here and that it might be picking up enough that it says, okay, I still have a similar shape sitting here too. So in this case, if this was one of the ones there, that would probably have the higher score. The black one would have the higher score. But if I said that I was looking for two, it might pick up this over here because it's kind of an alternating pattern. It could look like that, could be it, because these edges right here would be considered edges of the product that you're looking at, and it might pick that up as a potential match. Not the greatest scene here, but a potential match. Kind of makes sense? It's just letting you know that, think about what things could look like, you know. Then there's also the situation where you have high frequency lines, so very thin lines and everything, and they repeat. Okay. Because Pat Max is using Pat Quick and it's kind of down and dirty trying to find it, what it might do is if you train your pattern like this, what it might do is it might move it over by one. Score might go down a little bit, but as it's quickly trying to pick it up, the, your um, last one over here might not be the greatest look there, and it might say, no, no, this would be the pattern that you had, you're just missing something. So what you're I'm telling it is that if you go in and say repeating patterns, and your repeating patterns has to be used with the PatMax algorithm, and you also have to turn on advanced settings. So the advanced settings, if I push this, my little arrows go up, and it will give me some advanced settings to um, use underneath there. Repeating patterns is one of this. So this is a way that we're letting Pat, um, PatMax know I have some high frequency objects in there. They're going to repeat. Please make sure you spend more time making sure that's exactly what I'm looking for, not just kind of, yeah, 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 that, that last one might be kind of off and just keep going. No, no, no. Choose exactly what I'm looking for. So once again, you're dialing um, Pat Max in to say, I know, what, I know what I'm asking for. Bear with me on it. Give me a little bit more time. Okay. There's also this concept of elasticity. Once again, this is underneath our advanced parameters. 
So the elasticity is allowing for the pattern to be um, X amount of pixels away from what the ideal pattern looks like. So let's say our ideal pattern was a cross. What we're saying is, hey, the pattern can still be up to eight pixels away from what the, the edge is in a nonlinear fashion. Here's a situation that only the top grew. Bottom didn't, so it's not like a scaling change or it's not like an aspect change. It just was nonlinear up at the top. And we're saying that's okay. Can you think of an application that this might be helpful for? Plastic extrusion. Sometimes that can grow a little bit and you're saying that's fine. Just the fact that I'm putting it in there, that's, it should look somewhat like it. And I'm fine with it, just keep going. Don't, don't you know, discount me for that. Then there's this concept of granularity. And the granularity is really controlling the level of detail that you're looking for. So coarse granularity is going to be used by Pat Quick. Remember, that's your down and dirty, where do I find it? And then your fine granularity is going to be used by Pat Max. That's, um, fine granularity is almost always one. If it's not one, you should force it to be one. Okay? That means I'm looking at every single pixel around the edge. Now both of them by default will be set to zero. When you have them set to zero, it means Pat Max figures out what it should be. Okay? Otherwise, if you put a number in there, then it will take that number on top, um, you know, instead of letting it decide what it should do. In most situations, let Pat Max decide. Okay? But there might be a couple situations, rare ones, that either you need it to go faster and it's kind of picking up a little bit more detail than what you want, so you can increase the coarse granularity just to force it to go fast. Um, or maybe it's not picking up enough details and you want to force granularity down. You next to never mess with fine. Fine should always be either zero or one. It should never be something other than that. If it's something other than that, then you are killing your accuracy of Pat Max. That's what you're doing. So how does granularity work? So what it does is it finds where the edge is. So let's say our granularity is six. So it finds where the edge is. Okay, then it's going to look six pixels around on all sides till it finds the next edge. And then it's going to look another six pixels again, and so forth, and so on, until it gets a rough shape of what your object looks like. Okay? Now if I have a, um, a granularity of one, it finds where the edge is and looks one pixel around, finds the next one, the next one, so forth and so on, until it once again goes around the shape of your object. Which one's going to be faster? 32 boundary points are a lot quicker to go through than the bottom with 104. Which one's going to be more accurate? The 104, exactly, because it's precisely pointing where all those pixels should be. So what it's doing behind the scenes is not only is it finding where the points are, but it's also finding the relationship between each point to the next point. So this means Pat Max is very memory hungry. It definitely likes a lot of space to stretch out in and, and run its calculations. But that's how it can be very precise. That's how it's looking that if some of the um, edges is missing, it's like, yeah, that's fine, because I'm finding enough of the relationship between the other points that I know this is indeed what you trained. We just have some occlusion or some clutter that's blocking out those points that we were expecting. Now, let's say that you have an accept threshold set to 0.5. Got no pattern found. You set it down to 0.49, and now it comes back with a score of 0.85. Well, wait a minute. If I had the acceptance threshold set at 0.5, didn't find anything, just moved it down a hundredth of a point, and now, bam, I find it all the way up at 0.85. So you might say, how does that happen? Well, remember, Pat Max runs Pat Quick first, and then it runs Pat Max. So let's say that this is what we trained. Well, what Pat Max might see is just the outer edge here because there might not be enough contrast inside the inside. It never trained that as part of its model. Never quite saw it, just saw the outside edge. Now, Pat Max, of course, went in and it says, okay, not only do I know the outside edge, I know there are six dots in here. So maybe the image that comes in, comes in, and it blocks off some of those dots. Okay? More than half the image is black. So what Pat um, Quick said is, I'm sorry, more than half the image got blanked out you know, of my square. So no, this isn't a valid, valid object because I said it has to be at least half. But 
by moving it down just a little bit so it's at a rate that Pat Quick picks it up and says, oh, okay, this is a potential. Then Pat Max gets a hold of it and says, oh, not only do I have the square, I also have all the circles in there. Oh, no, that's really 85% of my product, not 50. So the moral of the story is sometimes you might need to reduce the accept threshold. But Pat Max has actually brought out in Vision Pro another setting that you can control it without having to reduce your accept threshold. And that's called course accept threshold. So your course accept threshold is basically your threshold for Pat Quick. Okay? You're saying, yes, I do want to use that. So if you go to your run params, once again, turn on the advanced settings. So just hit that button so that the, the arrows are pointing up. You have course accept threshold. So if you choose that, you can say, what is my course accept threshold? So you can still make sure that, hey, I've got really high results here, but I'm letting Pat Quick get a few more potential candidates so that then Pat Max can take a closer look at it and say, oh, yeah, no, that, that really is a good, good match there. You'll also see it come up on your results here. So it will tell you what the course threshold was on it or your course score. And that's as long as your course score beats your course threshold, it'll be looked at for Pat uh, Max. Also inside your runtime parameters revisited, it also offers for advanced settings this concept of score using clutter. It also offers some contrast threshold difference as well as um, XY overlap, whether things can be touching each other. So in the case of clutter, what's going to happen is that when you train the object, it trained where all the edges were. Okay? Then in a runtime situation, what happens is that it's going around here. Let's take this one, for example. Like Here's an edge, but then this little white mark behind the scenes, it picks that up as an extra edge as part of it. So, oh, I bump out here, or I come out over here, I come out a little bit more, and it's starting to edge it. So now you have these features that were not there when you originally trained it. These extra features are called clutter. So you have the choice of whether you want to use that within your training or not. So if I say score using clutter, what that means is that my score will be reduced if I have these extra features. So I'm sitting there saying, no, nope, no, nope. I want it to be exactly what I trained it to be. If I have extra stuff there, that's not good. So you're almost doing an inspection at that point, not just um, finding out where a part is. You're actually um, trying to identify, you know, inspect what's all it, um, that it looks like. But you could also deselect score using clutter, and then it says, okay, if I have those extra features, who cares? How are all the other edges related to each other. So it just takes that out altogether. It says, yeah, I might have extra features. Who cares? This is good, especially if you have labels and you don't want to uh, mask it out or um, 2D codes on it, because those 2D codes are going to change all the time. You're saying, yeah, yeah, I might change around. Who cares? I'm not trying to read a 2D code here. I'm trying to make sure it's the part I'm looking for. Just keep going. Then you have this concept of contrast, and that is your part compared to the background. So um, Pat Max can actually deal with very low contrast situations. So by setting a contrast, I can say what's the minimum contrast that my part can be from the background. Now with our LCD's projector, you notice right around the 31 mark, you can almost not see it anymore. But inside my, my image sitting here on the, the screen, I can still see it. 16 gets a little bit less, but at 5, even 5, I can barely see it on the screen. I have to kind of go at an angle to see that light shading. That means that my um, part compared to the background is only five grayscale levels difference. Pat Max can still pick that up. It is insane. You can also choose whether you have part of your picture overlapped. So this is something that a lot of tools can't deal with, that we're, we actually have part of it um, covered. And this is basically what they're saying is that I have to have, um, in this case, that up to 80%, so 0.8, of my part can be covered, and it's still good. So as long as 20% of my part is showing, I'm good. So you notice, as long as I pick up on this middle one at least 20% of what could be the model, it says, yeah, the model's probably there. We're good. Or if I lower this down to 0.3, it means I have to have at least 70% showing. I will only allow up to 30% to be covered. So in that case, notice that there's more than 30% being covered here. 
So it doesn't see it. It doesn't accept it. So you're choosing how much of an extrapolation do you want this to be? You know, do you want to say, hey, if I pick up enough of that, yeah, go ahead and we'll assume it's there. Now understand, it's not inspecting what's not showing there. It's just saying, I have picked up enough of the other edges and their relationship to each other that I feel confident this is the part you're looking for. But of course, if you have part of it sheared off underneath there, it doesn't know that. It's not psychic, but it's the closest that you can get to it being psychic. We also have this concept of being outside a region. This is the only tool that can deal with things being outside the region of interest. Now note I say region of interest instead of just field of view because every tool has a region of interest. Sometimes that is your field of view, but sometimes it's smaller. And if it's smaller, that's just called the region of interest. That's the, the region that the tool's looking at. So what Pat Max can allow for you to do is allow for part of your part to be outside of your region of interest or outside of your field of view. And it assumes that it's there. It's picking up enough of these other points in here and their relationship to each other that it says, yes, this is indeed the part you're looking for and how much is cut off. So right now I'm saying, hey, at least 30% need to be shown here. That's how much I need to, to be seen. Now this does hike up your time something fierce, especially if you have a busy background. This can definitely drive your time up. But for some people, especially on conveyor belts or that they're doing some type of picking, they're saying, I'm not really inspecting my part. I'm just trying to find it so I can pick it up. And sometimes it might not be totally on my field of view. Do I still want to allow for it? The, um, the overlap is how much can be showing. The accept threshold is just, um, it's how much is found, but that's why I'm saying it's not a precise percentage for the accept threshold because it, there's a few things that go into the um, score. One is how well does it fit what was trained. Then how well it is within the degrees of freedoms that's set. Um, and there's a couple other things that go into it. So it's not quite, I, I tell people a percentage, but it's not quite that. It's just an easy way to try to remember it. But this is a percentage. Okay. Now your score, your score will range from 0 to 1, where 1 is your perfect match. Brightness, contrast, and polarity do not affect scores. They might affect whether you find the, pro the item or not, but it will not affect the score, the final score, just whether it found it. Factors that do include, um, that go into score, is the degree of the pattern shape fit, so how close were you to what was trained, your, how do you fit within any of your degrees of freedom, do you have any missing features, things that were trained but aren't there anymore, and depending on whether you've chosen the score with clutter or not, whether your, your extra features are going to affect your, your score. So if you say score with clutter, they do affect it. If you deselect it, then that's not going to affect your score. Now, how can you deal with some execution time issues? Well, the larger the search volume, the longer the execution time. I hate that sentence. I like to say the larger the model region is compared to the search region, the faster it will go. Think about it as, you know, it's going chunk, 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 trying to find it. So if I'm looking at this much area and I have this big of a region, it's not going to take very long for it to go through it. But if I have this much of an area in my regions like this, brrr, I mean, it's going to take a while to go through it. So it's kind of a relative. What is your model region compared to your search region? Uh, lowering the accept, uh, accept threshold might increase the, uh, the time, but not by a huge amount. But you have more potential candidates. Looks a little bit longer for it. Uh, the larger number of results, once again, will make the time slightly longer because it's trying to make sure you know, I'm not just going for the highest one, I'm trying to go for as many as you're asking for. Lower the fine granularity, okay? Well, I'm not sure how you would lower fine granularity. It should be set to one. But um, yes, as you lower granularity, you are going to increase your time. As you increase granularity, such as your coarse granularity, you're going to decrease time because you're saying, okay, only take portions of what I'm looking for. I'm not, I don't need every single pixel. Uh, consider polarity to increase speed. That's just, once again, just to kind of speed it up so that it does, it's less candidates that it can look for. Remember, the more candidates, it's just going to make it slower. And contrast threshold. Please make it something other than zero. If you're making it zero, that for one thing, that doesn't make sense. You know, you're asking it to be the same color as the background. How can it find 
be an edge when there's no edge to be found. So it's, but a lot of people don't quite get that. So <laughs> make it something other than zero. Okay. Also, please never ask it to find an angle of a circle. It doesn't like you when you do that. As long as your circle has some type of notch or something, to just, then that's fine. But if it's a perfect circle, don't ask it to find the angle. Now, if you want accuracy, now this is accuracy. This is not whether Pat Max can do it or not. This is if you're trying to gain that 1 40th of a pixel accuracy that Pat Max can get to. Um, prefer the consider polarity so you know exactly what you're looking for. Um, keep your elasticity close to zero because then you're not increasing tolerance. You're um, making it very exact. Keep your nominal degrees of freedoms set. That means exactly what you're looking for. Don't have the part spinning all over the place. Keep it um, tightly fixtured. And if you do need degree of freedom zones, base them on realistic settings. What I mean is if your part's only going to do this in your field of view, don't set plus or minus 180. You know, set it to be like your 45 degrees or something. Make it realistic. Don't turn on scale if it's not going to change its scale or if it might just slightly do it and you really don't care what the scale value is because they're all really going to look the same. Leave scale set to 100. Make it, you know, th that, that's what it's looking for. It'll allow for like a 99 and a 101, but it's always going to report it as 100. If you don't care, don't ask for it. Um, also, your object appearance, keep it consistent in relative geometry. This also means your mounting of your camera. Objects should be consistent in appearance, and they, your features should be sharply defined. And Pat Max is using light to dark transitions, so the better you can give it this light to dark transitions, the better the accuracy you're going to get with it. Presentation and illumination, minimize your reflections or your shadows or nonlinear changes. Don't have shadows going over it or glares from, from lighting. Uh, that's just going to throw it off. Once again, can Pat Max handle that? Most definitely, but we're saying how do you achieve that accuracy? The accuracy means you have to control your environment. Also with a camera, make sure that you use a high quality lens so that you're not getting built in distortion into it. Also keep to the middle of the field of view. That is the sweet spot on a lens, is the center. Also focus carefully. We're looking light to dark transition, so make sure you're getting that there. Make sure that you're staying within your, your um, uh, depth of, was it depth of field? That's it, the depth of field. Uh, that you're staying focused in there. Also, um, adjust your aperture. You don't want too much saturation. What happens if you um, um, get oversaturated? There's too much light hitting your part, and what it does is it wells over to the well next to it. If that's where the edge is, you've now just fuzzed out your edge. If you fuzzed out your edge, you've just reduced the accuracy of Pat Max. Doesn't mean Pat Max won't find it, it means you're not gaining that accuracy you're looking for. Um, and also, you might want to calibrate the camera to the system. Make sure you dial it all in for that particular environment. Larger patterns are more accurate because we said larger patterns has more points. The more points, the more accuracy you're going to get. And make sure that fine granularity is one. If it tries to set a larger value, it will tell you, and it is usually due to um, having a blurred image. It will actually say image is blurry, could not pick one. Now let's talk about Search Max. So what Search Max does is it takes some of the features that are in Pat Max and it combines it with Connell Search, which is a normalized um, correlational search. Correlation normalized linear search, yes. Um, <laughs> so what a, a Connell Search does is it basically does a template matching. Okay, it's just looking for, you know, oh, I trained this, does this match what I've trained, you know, how close are they to each other. It's not really looking at edges, it's looking more at area and the grayscale distribution in there. While Pat Max, once again, is looking at edges. So it's great with the rotation and scale. Um, the Connell search would be great for some of the match features that it's looking for. In most situations, Pat Max is going to blow this out of the water, okay? But there might be some times where your search max will be your better option. So what's the differences between them? Well, Pat Max has to use a grayscale image at this point in time. I say at this point because I think they're trying to work on having it do color, but right now it's not. It's grayscale. So if I have a color image, that means I have to transpose it to be a grayscale and then feed that into the tool. Well, search mats can handle color going right into it. You don't have to do any changes. Outside the region, Pat Max can handle something outside the region. 
Search maps cannot. It has to be contained within the region. Uh, skewing. Skewing is just that it's shifted. For some reason, PatMax can't handle that. That's the only one that makes me scratch my head on, but SearchMax does. PatMax cannot handle skewing. A uh, small model. Well, we already said the bigger the model, the more edges, the better the information. While SearchMax can handle pretty small models because it's just doing a, um, um, a template matching. That's really what it's doing. So it's not really looking for edges. It's just doing what is those grayscale values compared to each other. Noisy background. Noisy background, PatMax, no problem. Can find things in noisy background. Uh, not so much search max, because search max starts saying, well, I got these extra features. I'm not quite sure what you're looking for. Yeah, and it throws up his hands. Uh, open shapes, like a corner. <laughs> Pat Max doesn't do that very well. It can find it if you don't have many there, but if you've got a lot of geometric shapes in there that are open, Pat Max doesn't do that well in it. Well, search max does. Search max can actually look at a corner, and it can be pretty good with that. And if you've got a lot of degrees of freedom, PatMax can handle them. It will increase your time, but it can definitely handle it. SearchMax can only handle a couple. After you get too much, time goes way up and it's just not worth it. So it's usually that you're just trying to dial in a couple of degrees of freedom uh, to make it work correctly. So where are you going to use SearchMax? Well, gray level images with small models. It could even be a, a color image with small models as well. That We're talking like 15 by 15 pixels, so pretty small amount. Also, of images that would create too many features for PatMax, like a page of written text, as well as textured objects, because PatMax is looking for all those light to dark transitions, and it starts picking all that up. Uh, objects that doesn't segment well due to color variations, as well as skewed objects. Wonderful with that. When do you not use it? If you've got a lot of degrees of freedom, you've got to add in that. You've got to add scale and rotation and, and translation. It doesn't do that well with that. Um, if you've got a noisy background, doesn't do that very, very well with noisy backgrounds at all. Because both those times, what you're going to find is the tool is just going to end up being way too slow. So what's this capabilities? Like we said, it's intensity-based uh, alignment, so it can do both grayscale and RGB. Uh, it's degrees of freedom. It can go 0 to 360, as well as the scale is the same as PatMax, 50% to 200%. Um, and it can allow up to 30 degrees of skewing. It's accuracy. It, we can go anywhere from a quarter to a tenth of a pixel. So it doesn't have the accuracy of, of PatMax. It has the accuracy of a Connell search. Uh, benefits, like I said, can handle small patterns um, and can also handle some blurry images or some confusing geometries as well as skewed ones. So how do you train it? Well, you train it very similar to PatMax. You still need to go through, grab the train image. You still need to train. It's still trained the similar way as it. Okay. But what you need to do is you need to tell it ahead of time, when are you setting your degrees of freedom? Are you setting them at the time you're training it, or are you setting it at the um, runtime? So it's kind of your choice where you want to set them at. So your results, I took an image that had Cognix written in four different ways, and I put it on SearchMax, and notice SearchMax finds all four of them. Took the same image, used it with, Cog uh, with the PatMax. Notice PatMax could not find the skewed one because that's the one that PatMax can't deal with is skew. So PatMax does have some powerful options like ignore polarity as well as your granularity to um, be able to tune in your model. Uh, but SearchMax does have some situations that it could be helpful with, uh, especially if you have very small models or if you've got like that you're looking at the back of like a bottle for the text. Now mind you, it doesn't read the text and if you have like a misspelling in there, it probably won't pick up the misspelling. But you might be able to know quickly, like if it put the wrong label on there, because it's kind of quickly looking at what that shape looks almost like. If you were to look at something quickly, you kind of see a quick format of what that should look like so that you can quickly view through it. Uh, Search Mac tracks color information as well as grayscale. So let's try this out. So I'm just going to make sure that I can still use PatMax. So I'm going to turn this on, moving PatMax around. Beautiful. Okay. What I'm going to do for Search Max is, do you see these little screws in the corner here? You'll notice that on your bad image, one's missing. What I want to do is I want to look for those screws. So I'm going to go up to my tools, and I'm going to bring in a Search Max. 
So cog search max tool, drop that right in here. And there we go. Now what's the first thing I need to do when I drop in my search max tool? Connect the image up. Yep, so I'm going to go to my input image, right click, and link from, the only option I have is my output image right now. I link it and I run it once, because much like Pat Max, I have to have an image in there so I can grab it. Uh, actually, let me just straighten this up a little bit. There we go. So now I've got to go in there and train it. So I'm going to open up my Search Max tool. And right now, here's my current input image. But if I go to current train image, notice it doesn't show me anything for my current train image. So I'm going to go in and say grab train image. So it grabs what was sitting there at the input image. So I'm going to take this. And this time, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to grab this down a little bit. okay? And I'm going to dig into this so I can see what's going on. But I want to change my train region. Instead of it being a cog rectangle affine, I'm going to go with a circle this time. Okay? Because what I want to train is I want to train just the screw in here. Okay? I'm being careful not to pick any of this around here. Anyone have an idea why I'm not picking up that? Because why? It wouldn't match. Well, or I would have to turn on angle. I could do it, but this there's like a 90 degrees rotation here. So I would have to turn on angle to be able to pick it up. So just by doing this, I'm just concentrating on the actual screw itself. Okay? And I'm going to go ahead and center my origin. There we go. So if I go back to my train parameters and say train, notice that it brings in just the screw. Now, do you notice this red around the outsides? of my circle. Anyone have an idea what that is? Mast region. Because really what we're dealing with is rectangular regions. So for me to have a circle, I'm ending up with a rectangle, but I'm masking these pixels around here. Just so when you see the red, that's all that it's saying is I'm ignoring those pixels. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and evaluate my degrees of freedom at runtime. That's fine. If I want to see advanced algorithms, I can just pick that. And it also allows me to have like this compression mode. Um, it just has to do with like how much of details am I, I look, um, am I looking for. And my um, granularity, I'm going to let it auto select. So let me go on. Let's see, I've already done my train region and origin, my runtime parameters. How many am I looking for? Two. Two. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and leave my accept threshold set to 0.5, not worried about a timeout. Um, and I'm not worried about an angle. This is probably not something I'm not going to give an angle to because I'm just looking at a round item. Um, and my scale, scale shouldn't change any. So that looks pretty good to me. Uh, my search region, right now my search region is what? Right now it's the full field of view. Okay, so if I take a look at current image, it's the full field of view. If I want to reduce it, I can change this to something like cog rectangle, and I can force it maybe to be like right over here in my image. Okay, so as long as it's within that region, it'll find it. What was an advantage of me creating a smaller? Time. time. Yep, time. It can also be for confusion, too. If you have the same thing up towards the top and you don't want to pick those up, um, I'm going to go ahead and put it back to be the entire image just so you can see what happens because, yes, the word Cognix does actually give it some issues. Uh, my graphics, I'm pretty good with, with my graphics. It's going to show me my origins and my match region, so let me go ahead and run it and see what things look like. So if I go to the last run um, input image, notice it finds these two right here. If I look at my results, it shows me which ones are which. Let me go ahead. I'm going to reduce this and let this run. And notice that indeed it does find it. Now look what happens as soon as I do this. Uh-oh. See what just happened there? Do you see where it found it? If we look at this one, you can see what's happening. So we have the two there. I come in. I cover one. What just happened? 
Yeah, just pulled one from the word cognix up there. Now, if I take a look, I can see what my score is. So when I find the one from cognix, it goes down to 0.63. So there are a couple ways that I can try to work around this. What are a couple of ways I can work around this? Yep, that's definitely one way. I can change what my search region is. So if I turn this off, change this to be perhaps be a rectangle, I have to go into my current input image to change what that is. So if I might just bring it down to the lower corner here and accept that. Now if I go ahead and run, Go back to my last run. If I cover it, yes, notice it's not doing it. Now notice that it's showing me this, this false one. Okay? It's letting me know in my results it is indeed false. Okay? But it's still picking it up. This is something that they said Search uh, Max and actually Pat Max can do, is that it can still show you when you have a false number there. There is a, um, let me look back a bit, there is a way that you can try to get around this. But unfortunately, even though this is a, um, below your accept threshold, it still shows that you have this erroneous one there. It doesn't show it as being valid. There's a setting that you're looking for to say, like, is it valid? And it's not valid. But unfortunately, it does show up if you're looking for what, how many you found. It does show it as two right now. If I flip this over, then notice, indeed, it's jumping around as well. Very low values that it thinks that it's trying to pick it up there, but it's just not. Now, it could make it maybe a little bit bigger and have it pick up some of my details in there, and that might give a little bit more of a result there, but I wanted to at least show you what it would do with just a little small screw. Okay. So let me let, go ahead and let you guys try it, see how it works out for you. Try different things. I mean, this is your time to really start breaking. You won't break anything. Worst case, the, the computer will break into smoke and die. But we have other ones.